another thing we were doing as part of this is that we also found out that if our boys, our young people, our women continue in repolluting the place, that will not also help the process. That will not also help to achieve this. So what we did was to say, look, even though it was lucrative, the illegal refining, the bunkering thing was lucrative. My dear, a whole lot of young Ogoni people had much money. So it was even dangerous to pull them out of it. We said, look, we will do it. Because one, we want this environment to be clean. I was have nothing to do, but after some time, I discovered what called bunkery. So we do the bunkery, and that bunkery helps us uh, a lot of things. After some time, the mosque came and asked us to stop. Say it's not good for heads. Uh, so from then, we listened to mosque. The Niger Delta is at the heart of crude oil exploration in Nigeria. However, years of unaddressed pollution from the exploration caused environmental degradation, health problems and loss of livelihood that led to dissatisfaction and agitation among local communities. The cleanup of the polluted environment, provisions of emergency measures like clean drinking water and restoration of lost livelihoods were unduly delayed by the government. When the cleanup process eventually picked up, it was challenging for the government to gain the needed trust and active involvement of the communities in the exercise. But the situation is changing, as the cleanup is steadily becoming all-inclusive and satisfactory, following interventions by concerned stakeholders like the civil society organizations in Cordaid's strategic partnership. Okay, at the inception of the program, uh, one of the core pillars of the program was explained in terms of building capacity of civil society organizations who in turn were to build the capacity of community stakeholders to advocate for their needs and um, their expectations regarding the cleanup. This was done in a number of ways in terms of how CODID approached it. Uh, there was a sense of co-creating the, the pathway of change. And so using the theory of change approach to managing the project, one of the things that we, we came up with was a collaborative creation of meaning in terms of having conversations with the suicide organizations in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the partnership on how change was going to be achieved. The CODIS Strategic Partnership Project has built a capacity in face initiative in lobby and advocacy and um, in monitoring and evaluation because all goes together in terms of programming. Um, it helps us to um, articulate our advocacy strategy to engage in evidence-based advocacy. So in doing that we do a lot of community engagement to get the um, issues that um, borders around environment, that borders around the um, livelihood of the people because the environment and the livelihood um, goes together and based on the feedback we get from community members we now develop advocacy strategies to engage um, different um, stakeholders from the government to even community groups and other stakeholders around um, that particular area that we're working in. The, our mandate in the partnership has been to advocate for full participation of women in the implementation of the cleanup process and also the implementation of the emergency measures. So we have created a women's capacity on monitoring, we have created their capacity on engaging with the media, we have created their capacity on also create, creating more awareness among community members.
Mrs. Slack uh, actually adopted an approach uh, of uh, adopting an evidence-based methodology uh, to generate uh, data and information from the community on the one side and use those information to engage the parliament at different level. We engage the parliament at local level, state level and the national level. We have had two key rallies in Abuja. We brought partners to that rally and then we brought women and youths to that rally in Abuja. We took our issues on the cleanup because the cleanup was heavily delayed. So what we did with that rally was to bring back the issues back to the front burners. We brought media people and then we spoke, the minister came out. The second rally, the minister came out and actually addressed us and everybody went back. And that address also elicited responses from the communities. Several capacity building workshops were organized by Cordate for the CSOs as a continuation of the learning process. The partners also had step-down trainings for the community members to enable them, particularly youth and women, participate in the cleanup exercise. For over the five years, the Codex project has uh, helped to build the capacity of publish what you pay and her members. So our job is focusing on uh, integrating human rights into impact assessment. We have sensitized the community, we equally train the community on the integrating human rights into impact assessment, uh, into how community can maximally participate. We organize sensitization meeting across the Goni communities, Goni 4 LGAs, where we started telling them about government ex their expectations from the cleanup that, and their role they have to play also. After that, we also have to do a lot of sensitization and um, advocacy visit to government agency in Nostra, even River State Minister of Environment and also the state government, the River State House Committee on Environment. We did a lot of that to prepare that baseline for them. And we started seeing that the Goni community started changing their mindset towards the cleanup. But we told them that, one, they need to be peaceful this period for, for the community, the contractors to come and do what they need to do. So it was quite successful. One of the things we did, we saw that communities, they wanted to participate in the cleanup, which was part of the mandate of the community to be part, part of the cleanup, but they don't have the capacity to be part of the cleanup. What did we do? We selected some community youths and trained them on remediation skills. We call them our local monitors at the community. First, introduction of what they call capacity training, a step-down training they did to me was that I should give a step-down training on peace building and I gave, I sensitized the women and also trained them on peace building with a demonstration. The CSO's partners through advocacy and sensitization awakened the community members of their responsibility as chief architects of the change they desire to embrace the alternative livelihood for survival while the cleanup is being done. God aid is one of the, you hear me talk now, it's God aid, like I said. It's the money they spend on us. Like we have come to meeting, bring out people like us to come out, they train us. It's because they have trained us. We now know everything that's happening in our community. Before now, I don't know anything about remediation. I don't know anything about uh, whether groundwater is bad or whatever thing. But the training they have given to us has made us exposed. The process, which I just spoke about, the reason why we are doing this is because we are treating less polluted sites now. I think when most of start to sensitize us concerning this uh, oil bone cream of things, we decide to say let us listen to most of that. That is our parents' body. Each time most of speak. We always, all the Oguni always buy by the rule of Mosul. Since we decided to stop, it is the Okada business that I normally do to sustain my family. They have taken.
taking us to Senegal, to expose us to other places, places with, with, with only ourselves, we couldn't have been there. All the experience and what can make us to be sustained in life were given to us by Kebekachi through the aid of this Kada that we are, we are celebrating today for the work they so far done to us. Overall, this, this program would pride itself as having contributed significantly to um, providing the process and laying the foundation upon which future programs can build in terms of making sure that the cleanup happens effectively. Prior to this program, uh, we didn't have uh, a functioning IPREP and I can say without uh, any sense of um, being immodest, that this program kept the Ogoni uh, cleanup in the forefront burner of national discourse for the far past five years. There's hardly any week that something wasn't being pulled out on the cleanup that can be directly attributed to the members of the program. So going forward, I would want a situation where most of these communities and, and traditional rulers, uh, councillors from Ogoni, National Assembly members from Ogoni, who are already sensitized to the need to continue to have these conversations. There could be conversation going in the sense that holding IPREP accountable must be at the forefront of the next steps.